And so the way we've gone about that is on multiple layers. So for example, the Microsoft Cloud is ready for any device. You can be on iOS or Android or Windows Phone and use the cloud for your application state, for your notification, and as a backend for every application that you build across those devices. We are also a cloud that supports any OS on any container technology. So we support both Linux and Windows Server. This is something that I want to just make sure I drill home. Microsoft loves Linux. 20% uh, of Windows, 20% uh, of Azure is already Linux. And we will have always first class support for Linux distros. In fact, uh, Scott's going to talk more about some additional container technology as well as new distros that we will get supported on Azure. But this is something that I want to make sure that everyone recognizes that this is not some new news. This is, in fact, today true. And we only plan to take that to the next level going forward. It also is the case that we support all data stacks. We have fantastic support for SQL Server, which is a big business for us. But so we also have support for Oracle on Azure. We have support for IBM on Azure. And every open source uh, distribution of things like Cassandra or Hadoop or Mongo, uh, we have all of these data stacks available on top of Azure today for developers and businesses to be able to take advantage of. When it comes to developers, so once you have support for Windows and Linux, you have support for all of the develop, uh, data stacks, it also means that any developer using any language on any framework can bring their code, use those frameworks on Azure. Today we have great support, obviously, for .NET, for Java, in, which is officially supported by Oracle. We are the only public cloud that they support. And PHP, Python, and Node.js. This is just a subset of the, dot, of the open source, as well as other uh, middle tier frameworks and languages that are supported on Azure. And the last point is perhaps the most important uh, point, which is we are not building our hyperscale cloud in Azure in isolation. We are building it to compose well with other clouds. We today, for example, in Azure AD, have the ability to do single sign-on with all the other public clouds, from Salesforce to Workday to even Amazon. So you as an IT professional can use this one service on Azure to be able to manage the credentials of your employees across all of your public clouds. That's the, one of the core architectural tenets for us, which is how do we make sure that there are no limits to what Azure can be, how Azure can be used when it comes to being able to support these other clouds. The same is true when it comes to the true hybrid and private cloud. And we will talk more about some of the specific improvements that we will announce today. But it's very important for us that we support every business in every industry, many of them regulated, in every geography where there will be data residency laws. And given that complexity, or the real world complexity that one has to deal with, we want to enable these private and hybrid clouds as the edge of Azure. So we don't think of this as businesses that are legacy businesses. They are, in fact, businesses that truly will take the power of what we do in Azure and come bring about the full revolution of distributed computing going forward. That's our worldview of how to build clouds. It's not about just building one mega scale cloud. You absolutely build a mega scale cloud, but it should have no limits in terms of how it works with other clouds.